Hello, today we are going to build REST APIs with Clojure using Threaded, Integram, and HotSQL. Let's get into it. In this series, we are going to build our own common system, which is mostly based on Tanya Rassia's blog post here. And, uh, but instead of using Node and Express, we are going to choose our own Clojure stack. To set up the project, you can either use a project templating tool or just uh, uh, create a folder structure yourself. So what we need is uh, we need uh, our project view folder. Just call it the common app. CD into the common app. First of all, we need the uh, the source folder, and then uh, I'm going going to put everything inside the common namespace so uh, we need those and then uh, we need a couple files uh, the depths the eden file get ignore the, the handlers file now we can go to our code editor now go to the depths.eden file and right now it's empty but uh, so let's start by adding a empty map and the we want to define where our path is, also the dependencies. Now we can uh, launch our Clojure repo and then connect our editor to it. Also, we are adding this list to the get ignore. Go to our common.handler namespace. First, we want to require the uh, directed core. To understand the directed syntax, uh, let's start by defining a roots. You can define a simple root called the router function. Turn the route into router. To see what's in the router, at the front is the, the path. Second part of the vector is the data associated with the path. Uh, we can have multiple routes uh, in the same router. Evaluate these one by one again. Uh, we can also do uh, nested routes. Like under the API, we can have a, another route, say user uh, post. For this nested routes case, uh, we are just prefixing the slash API to all the children routes. Key feature to threaded is the, the routing data. For example, the easiest form of data is to just give a name to the specific route. And there's a shorthand way of writing the, this uh, username directly. So now on the right, uh, we can tell that there are data, the data associated with the, the pin route is the uh, we give it the name, uh, it's the namespace keyword. Let's just uh, define the users, uh, also the names for other routes. So looking good. You can actually attach virtually any data to the route. And then you can tell on the right, uh, our root uh, has the, these two has the data associated with it. And then because uh, this is a nested route, so the data associated with the parent route gets merged into the, the data in the children route. For this to be useful to us, we want to be able to find the data based on path. So there are two functions we can use. One is to the match by path. In this case, you actually find the data. You can also define a, a path with parameters. Again, um, okay, so in this case, we can uh, see the ID get uh, parsed out from our path. The router also goes the other direction. You can match the by name to find ping. In order to build our ring application, Threaded has the, this ring router. It is a higher order router, which adds support for request method based routing and handlers and middleware. In order to use it, we need to include that in this namespace. When we trying to match the router, the result is slightly different. It's a map of all the HTTP methods. So in order to use it, let's change the 
beta here, it's a handler function which takes in a single argument of request. So let's do this again. With this, we can create an actual ring application which uses the ring function ring handler. It's just a function request method that's put get by the path. So let's write a function that starts our application. Run jetty, giving a reference of our function so we can do a bit of hard code reloading on running on port 3000, join false. We don't want the thread to be blocked on this line. Bring. Oh, and uh, yeah, don't forget to require jetty. kick off the server okay next let's add the swagger UI to our application we need to include write this swagger and the write this swagger UI let's uh, format this so it looks a bit better in order for the swagger UI to work we just provide other default routers Ray. Swagger UI handler. And this is uh, optional, uh, but just to make it clear that our homepage will be directing to the Swagger UI. Go to the local host. So now uh, we can see our Swagger UI is, is rendered, but the uh, but it doesn't work. For the Swagger UI to work, uh, we still need to provide the Swagger.json, which is uh, a specification of how to generate the Swagger UI. So we need to include that in our router. Coming back, uh, let's add one more route. Uh, coming from the Swagger, create Swagger handler. We need the Moon Tanya core, uh, as in rated uh, middleware binding. We want to inject our middleware into our router. You can either do the format middleware, uh, which includes three, all three, or just, or you can choose them one by one. Besides that, we'll just use the Mutanya uh, instance for our middleware. Let's revert this back. Okay, we can go to our browser again. Yep, and now we can see uh, those two. So there are a couple of uh, Swagger features we want to add uh, to our router. For example, now we can tell the Swagger JSON handler that uh, we don't want to make documentation on this route. Giving a title of this description will be API. Also, we can tag more things to the other routes as well. Yeah. Now the Swagger is in place, we can start uh, building our routes. So let's uh, remove some unnecessary things. We can start by uh, nesting our routes in the comments uh, route, and then we'll give the, this the Swagger tag inside we will have the base route slash slug slash id slash id under the uh, the comments route we want we will have two methods one is get and then we have the post method uh, similarly uh, for the get slug or the id two methods once we start defining the route data the router is complaining that we don't have the handler associated with it so let's just create a default handler called OK. And let's just add that to all of our routes. Now we can see there's a common group in here and we have five of our methods ready. We can do a, a little bit better on um, documenting our APIs. Uh, for example, we want to know what the shape of the request looks like and we want to know what the shape of response looks like. 
it's time to introduce coercion. Uh, coercion is a process of transforming parameters and responses from one format to into another. They did separate routing and coercion into two different steps. We will need to include two more namespace. Rated coercion spec, rated coercion, ring coercion. The actual coercion instance is separated from the middleware itself. And uh, so we need to specify an coercion, uh, another coercion key. So we can coerce the request and core the course the response. So that's our setup. And now we can uh, do an example in this post request. We can specify a parameter parameters key. We tell the coercion that uh, it is the body parameter that we want to coerce. We have a couple parameters like we have the name which is a string slot which is also a string we have the text we have the parent id which is a integer with that uh, refresh this we see the doc uh, the ui automatically generate this for us and so this is uh, this this is the parameter section and we can do the same thing with the response the shape of the this value is directly related to the coercion uh, library you are using. The key of response is the, a, for example, a 200, which has a body of the string for now. So now we can tell uh, when the status is 200, uh, just returning a single simple string. And there you go. For the slugs, we can have the parameters of uh, this will be a path parameter and the slug uh, string. Likewise, uh, the parameter here is also a path parameter and the ID will be integer. If you just put the string and the ID, so it becomes a server error now and we can go back and look at it. It is said the uh, request coercion fail because this is not server's fault for not being able to coerce the data we want to include a new namespace that will handle the exceptions for us rated ring middleware uh, exception we want to insert that into the our middleware chain so he here you need to be a little bit careful uh, because this middleware chain executes from uh, top to bottom when the request comes in, it will first enter the Swagger feature middleware and then one by one get into all the other middleware. And our exemption handling needs to happen outside of the coercion so that our exemption middleware is able to catch the exception and then not just crash. So here we need to uh, insert the exception middleware before the coercion handler. here again and then we can see, we can see there are some coercion problem for the same reason instead of using the combination of three format middleware we would like to use them separately and put the format request middleware after the exception middleware so that whenever the request comes in and fail to format it we can throw the exception properly Today we learned about related and finish our handler component, but you might have noticed there's no easy way to stop our Jetty server once it starts and running. Next time we'll learn about using Itagran to assemble our system and to create a reloaded workflow for us to develop our application. So stay tuned and see you next time.